I just watched it and was like, rewind. <laughs> rewind. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Fans don't know how season three is going to end yet. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. Um, I'm wondering how much would you say it's going to set up for season four? Should we expect any cliffhangers or? Uh, it definitely is going to push us into the fourth season. Um, I would say that there's some big twists are coming at the end. There's some events that are going to happen in the last few episodes. I, I hope that the audience doesn't see coming and are gonna change a lot of things in the Mankind universe. Also, we have, I mean, we have a whole plan, like a 10-year plan, so we, if Apple wants to give us those seasons, <laughs> we're ready. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, are we preparing to like catch up to present day, or? And beyond, mm -hmm. yeah. We'd like to catch up and go, I mean, there was always the plan from the outset to to keep this sort of roughly, more or less, you know, decade jump every every uh, season, and to just keep going and to like catch up to where we are, and hopefully, you know, pass where we are. We have a historic opportunity. The first mission to Mars. Sonia, Molly got fired at the beginning of season three. I mean, <laughs> what do you think we're done with her journey, or what do you want to see next? I mean, she's very busy painting. Yeah. Uh, so maybe there's a budding career for Molly as an artist. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm. You know, it was. It was brutal. Yeah, they put them next to each other here just to have it out. <laughs> just saying. Uh, and unwarranted. <laughs> anyway, how uh, dare? How dare? <laughs> Someone will have the last word. We'll see who. But yeah. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was great, great plot twist and really fun, and also just really fun to get back in the tub. And I was happy. And wanted to yeah, smoke that weed. Yeah. <laughs> Jody and Ren, you two in particular, took a really deep dive into the political side of stuff this year, being like the two big bosses of the United States, like entirely this season. I mean, what was it like tackling some of those bigger issues like Will coming out and like some of the issues with the Russians now that they're on Mars? Hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I think one of the things that makes my job as an actor easier is that we get a whole template and the, <clears throat> you know, the actual like hard copy of our script. And so I feel like it's about really fleshing out those moments and giving Margot a strong point of view. But I also feel like it's fun for me to play what is political, but also what does Margot think of what's political and, um, you know, how much is she actually leaning into like the whole idea of a, a race and how much of that is being pushed upon her. And I don't know, I feel like it's, it's kind of like a really nice wave to ride. Just, I don't know what she thinks about that. <laughs> yeah, you took yeah. the words out of my mouth. I feel like it's such a fun thing to sort of um, seesaw between the public stakes and the personal stakes of yeah. the political landscape and like what's going on with the space race and what's going on in the country. And yeah, we both, I think, get to play this sort of dualistic, certainly you asked about the will coming out moment, is such a like public spectacle and a lot of um, public facing things to deal with. But then of course for Ellen, there's this intensely personal relationship to exactly what he's doing um, that makes for such a fun thing to play as an actor. That scene is really beautiful of you in the office. It's really, you. really nice. <laughs> Thank you. I just watched it and was like, rewind. <laughs> rewind, <laughs> it's really beautiful. The future belongs to all of us. Eddie and Chantal, some of my favorite like dynamics I've seen so far is just watching <laughs> Karen and Dev. And I mean, especially like Dev, there's two sides of him that just, it's hard to really track like who he is as a person. We see him as like that progressive leader who really takes everyone's opinion into consideration when he's making decisions or, or so we think. Um, <laughs> and then there's the side of him who like refused to help the Russian ship because it's, it is a race. I mean, I would love to get your guys' perspective of like, do you think he's a good guy? Like, who do you, th how, what do you think of him? <laughs> uh, Dev is definitely a mystery wrapped in a riddle. He is an enigma, uh, but he's a human with human complexities, which makes him fascinating. There's a lot that you don't know about Dev. Uh, some of the things that I know about Dev led him to make the decision not to save the Russians. Uh, and I, as an actor, could stand behind those decisions. So, and I know it's a, it's a polarizing uh, subject. There's a lot of people that are pissed off with that decision, but um, you know, I think Dev has his reasons. 
Absolutely. That's like, it's like that a lot in the show. You see, I mean, Karen's made some decisions that people don't necessarily agree with or understand. And what I love is they, they don't sit and try to explain or make you take a side. And whatever filter you come from in your own life, from your own experiences, is going to be the way that you view whether Dev is good or bad, whether Karen is good or bad, or you know anybody just being human, making decisions based on you know their own information and kind of what's sometimes best for them and not always thinking of the program or the future. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, looking at where this is going, I mean, things are like getting messy fast. I mean, with the whole situation on the US base, I mean, it's getting crazy. I mean, are we ready? Should we be ready for another confrontation with the Russians? Uh, tensions are gonna rise. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gonna get better, let's put it that way. <laughs> It's not going to get easier. It's not. It's you know, hard when you're baked in there with heat and everything else, you know? Yeah. No, that was the part where I was just like, all right, that's where I would be like, bye. <laughs> See ya. I'm heading back. <laughs> oh, my God. So Gordo and Tracy are some of fans' favorite characters. And obviously, they had such a incredible but heartbreaking end in season two. What was it like going into season three, like knowing that they weren't going to be a part of it anymore? I didn't watch, yeah, I didn't watch the finale for, even though it had aired for like six or seven months until we were starting back up on season three because I thought if I didn't watch it, it didn't happen. And then they would come back. And I mean, I remember all of us, what was, I think our last day was shooting in that cemetery and yeah. you felt it. We were all a bit it gutted. It feels weird to be here. I'm yeah. saying that. It really does. It feels like this is our show. And they were and are an integral piece of the DNA of this yeah. show. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I, I I have a chair here for Michael and I have <laughs> yeah. a chair here for Sarah. <laughs> Mentally, they belong yeah, on yeah. this yeah. in this arena with us. The show wouldn't be the same. And you certainly yeah. feel their presence in the show too, and yeah, that was yeah. important to us uh, as writers that they were an integral part of the show, and those characters were an integral part of this world. And so it felt like this world had to acknowledge them and what had happened and what their legacy was and it sort of affected a lot of the characters and also literally affected the world at large and their kids are still such a big part yeah. of a big part of the show and you can see how their death affected them their death actually is the one thing there were two things but one thing that i got like anger text about from my family and stuff they were like i can't believe you killed tracy and gordo i was like i know i know but they'll always be part of the fiber of the show oh, yeah. you know that's what you guys planned, right? Like as it evolves and, and moves forward, we're not all gonna be 200 years old on the show. <laughs> I mean, for sure you will be then. <laughs> I don't know, with these technological advancements, like it's cool to see what's like around in the 90s just because NASA like has all that crazy technological funding. I mean. Figured out cryogenics. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming. It's there's so many, there's so many uh, different uh, storylines and actors. We don't all work together. Yeah. So uh, when I joined the show, uh, I was asking Chantel, like, okay, so where's Gordos and uh, wh where are they? Where, where are these actors? Because I, I love them and I can't wait to like do stuff with them. And then the episodes were dropping at the same time and then I saw their... Yeah, she's yeah. like, their no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be around. Now they're stuck with me at Comic-Con instead of the two chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you. <laughs> um, so you guys were uh, talking about a lot of the makeup earlier. What was it like having that uh, makeup to age you guys up? I mean, obviously we're jumping forward by decades. I mean, what was that process like? Long. Long. Uh, early mornings. Do you remember Jodel's when we would text each other? Like, I have a 1.30 yeah. a.m. pickup <laughs> and it's 9.30 at night. How do you go to sleep? Truly, like, we were texting each other sleep tips because yeah. often, I mean, Chantal, yeah. I think you somehow you ended up on a lot of Mondays, which yeah. for those, for folks that don't work in the film industry, Mondays start the earliest, your call time's the earliest, gets progressively later throughout the week. But so Chantal was in that chair sometimes at like, 2.45 a.m. Yep. What's fun yeah. is taking it off. Yeah, that's oh, the worst. Oh, teasing. I'm not 70. <laughs> it's so fun to get younger for a change. But what's it's funny great. is the end of the day, you've worked all day, you've worn like wigs and prosthetics and you just want to like rip it off and go home. And you sit in this chair for like 45 minutes as they remove it with the most patience you've ever had to have because <laughs> you just want to be home in bed. Um, and the team that we had that did it is in, it felt like it was your face mm. it wasn't for me like i don't know it was creepy and i didn't let my husband see me for a long time so. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. It felt like I had ants on my face. Yeah. Like just itchy all yeah. day long. Mm, all challenge. day long. Yeah. And trying not to like scratch at it. But I think everyone's skin reacts differently yeah. to it. But it's really cool seeing it in the mirror because you realize how arresting the difference is. So Yeah, and you know, doing a show that jumps a decade, almost a decade every season. This was the first time, you know, they did some aging to us in season two with makeup, but this at least for me, I felt like it helped me mentally and imaginatively fill in the gaps as mm. well for Ellen and like make that physical leap to being 54 when she was younger in the season before, you know? Yeah, well, it looks incredible, guys. It's been so cool to watch you guys and where the show is going. And I will be watching episode seven as soon as I get back home <laughs> because I am so excited to see what comes next. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs>